What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be prepping and painting all of the mild steel components on the roaster. I got them all laid out here. You can see they've kind of developed a little bit of surface rust, some more than others. Like this face plate is just a bunch of surface rust because it's been sitting exposed. But we're gonna take care of that with this product here. It's a uh, phosphoric acid. Um, metal etch product uh, basically it's just going to dissolve the rust and then it also leaves a, a zinc phosphate coating which will prevent rust from reoccurring but hopefully we'll get some paint on here before that happens and then behind that I've got the actual coating that's going to be applied um, I'm going to use a gravity fed HVLP spray gun for that uh, we'll get into that a little bit later and what I want to do is mix, I got a couple different colors which I'll show you in a bit and I'm going to blend those to try to get a little bit of a different color because um, what I had in mind wasn't available from this manufacturer. So we're going to play with that in a little bit and see if we can come up with a cool color. But first uh, we need to prep these panels, get them all cleaned up and we'll go from there. All right, I just finished up sanding all these parts with the DA. Uh, most of it I used 180 grit just to kind of take down some of the small scratches. Uh, some of them I had to hit with 80 grit just to kind of get the deeper scratches out. But now we're ready to go and acid wash these. So we're just going to take some of this metal prep, uh, pour it in the cup. Uh, we're not going to dilute it at all. You can, but typically I'll use it at full strength. And then we'll just use some of these Scotch-Brite pads to remove some of the surface rust that the DA didn't take off. And then after that, we'll just rinse it with clean water and blow it off with air and let them fully dry. Then we'll pretty much be ready to paint. I have to do a little tiny bit of filler right here. You probably saw in one, I can't remember what part it was, but I gouged that right there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of filler to hopefully clean that up. But everywhere else should just get paint. I'm hoping that this paint will fill you know, some of the small scratches. Some of them might still show, but that's just kind of how it's gonna be. I'm not gonna get too picky with this. But anyway, let's move on to cleaning this and then we'll start looking at mixing paint. All right, I just finished up cleaning these panels with the acid wash. Uh, I didn't film it because it's pretty monotonous and boring, but I did want to give you a quick demo on how well this stuff works. So I got a little piece of scrap here. I'll just uh, quickly wash and scrub with the Scotch-Brite just to show you how it works. So you really just want to kind of lightly scrub it, saturate the whole thing, get it all wet, and you can kind of let it work. You don't really have to scrub too hard. You let the acid do most of the work for you. But you can already see it's just really dissolving most of the rust. Some of the deeper pitting and stuff is, you know, you got to work more at, but just a light surface rust comes right off. So it's it's really pretty awesome and then from here you would just you know take it outside and spray it off with water and 
you know, you want to dry it as quickly as possible. You don't want to leave the water sitting on it because it will flash rust. Um, and this stuff is, you know, kind of weird at first because it leaves that uh, zinc phosphate coating on it, which kind of, in some cases, looks like surface rust. Um, it just has like a bronze tinge to it. Uh, but you just got to kind of figure it out. But yeah, rinse it off and, and dry it as quick as possible. And then you're pretty much ready to, you know, put any kind of direct to metal uh, paint right on top of that. I went ahead and rinsed off the tube outside and you can already see how clean that is with just a little bit of scrubbing. It even took the discoloration off where the tube was electrically welded uh, during manufacturing. So yeah, pretty awesome stuff. If you ever need to uh, prep some bare metal for paint. Real quick before I go any further, I just wanted to explain one part of the process. So I've got this VHT high temp paint that I want to use for the inside surfaces of the control panel, the space plate, and also the inside of the cover. Just because it's inexpensive and it doesn't really matter what color it is. I only have a limited amount of the the outside color top coat that I want to use. So I'm just trying to conserve that. And then these, uh, the rear plate and the face plate are only going to get coated on the outside because the inside will get essentially seasoned by all the oils that come off the coffee beans. So we don't really have to worry about corrosion in that uh, respect. So yeah, I'm just going to mask off um, all the outside surfaces of this panel as well as this one and that guy back there just so I don't get any overspray on that so it'll be a fresh you know clean bare metal surface for the real paint that we're gonna put on here so let's just get to masking and we'll go from there Just finished up masking all these panels. I kind of went pretty easy on this one. Um, I didn't want to put in the time to do the whole thing. If it gets a little bit of overspray on the outside, it's okay. I'll knock it down with some scotch Brite or something. I just didn't want to take the time to do that. This one though, I plugged up all the holes or taped up all the holes from the backside. But this thing will be facing down like this when I paint it with the VHT. So I just did the sides there. And this one was a little more complex is the reason I went, you know, all the way around and then also taped up the openings. Okay, so we got the panels all cleaned up. I went and wiped them down with isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. Uh, normally I would use um, like a wax and grease remover. I just don't have any right now. So you could use a mild cleaner like alcohol. So they're just all set up ready to paint. So we'll get the VHT ready to go and we'll shoot a couple coats of paint on these. And one more thing to note, um, you're going to want to make sure you've got, you know, some hair metal or something to listen to. Uh, Guns N' Roses, Quiet Riot, Cinderella, uh, White Snake, anything like that will work. Uh, so just make sure you get that set up before. All right, let's get to it. Well guys, it's the next day and I've got the VHT sprayed onto the inside of these panels. And uh, I'm not sure if they came out as good as I had expected. Uh, this paint, it just came out like water. Like it's super thin, so I've got runs and sags all over. Uh, and I'm usually pretty careful when it comes to uh, using rattle cans. But I guess that's just how it goes. I've used this product before, but it was the uh, engine enamel or in high temp engine paint. This is like the super high temp, which I don't think I've ever used. But anyway, it'll do the job. It just doesn't look the nicest. It took like three 
light coats and you can still kind of see the bare metal showing through. So it's just kind of a difficult product to use, but it'll get the job done. So what we want to do next is get the paint mixed. Um, you can see I got a couple different colors here. They didn't have exactly what I was looking for. I think I had mentioned earlier. So I'm going to try to mix these two together. I'm going for like a buttercream, uh, if that makes sense. So kind of a little more yellow in the ivory. You know, we'll just have to see how it comes out. And I'll be shooting it through my Iwata LPH 80. And I'll be using the 3M PPS system, which is super cool because you can paint upside down and you don't got to worry about spatter on your parts or anything like that. So it's super cool. And check this out, the baby series. I, I just love Japanese products. It's awesome. So anyway, we're going to get some uh, colors mixed up and, you know, shoot some color on these parts and see how they come out. I think I got a color I'm happy with. You can see I did a little sample here on that scrap piece of metal that I played with yesterday. So we got the Goddess Ivory, which is just the color that came in the bottle. And then I mixed 4% of the yellow and hopefully the camera's picking that up, but you can see the difference. Didn't take much, but that's pretty much what I was going for. So yeah, I just put 50 grams of the ivory in the cup and then added two grams of the primary yellow and that's what I ended up with. At first it didn't want to seem to mix so I was kind of concerned. I mean they're the same product so it just took a lot of stirring. I think what I'm going to do is just uh, pour this back in or before I do that I'm going to add two percent or four percent to the the main bottle and then pour this back in and shake it up and you know, we'll pretty much be ready to go. So uh, let's do that. All right, guys, we're just about ready to spray. Uh, I got all the paint and mixing supplies and the gun all ready to go. Um, over here, we've got all the parts laid out. I tried to orient them so that, you know, I'd easily be able to get in between and, you know, wouldn't uh, keep me from getting paint on certain surfaces. So those are all cleaned up and ready to go. I also ran over them with a tack cloth to remove any lint or dust or anything like that because the rags I used to, to uh, prep everything are not lint free. So one thing to remember. But uh, yeah, we're just about there. So I'm going to mix up some paint and we're going to shoot these parts.
Well guys, I got the parts all sprayed out. They actually came out pretty nice. I didn't get any runs or sags. This stuff laid out really nice. So I would definitely use Duracoat in the future if I had any more uh, high temperature paint projects. Um, the cool thing about this is you can, you can mess with the ratios for the hardener. It says to use a 12 to one but you can also use a 10 to one, which will make it glossier. So the more hardener you use, you know, the glossier, but 10 to one's the limit. So this, this kind of came out like a semi-gloss. You can kind of see the glare there from the overhead lights. I did get a little overspray on some of the parts, so they're a little bit, you can feel kind of some like paint dust, I guess, if you will. But you know, we're just gonna live with it. Obviously I painted in my garage, not a nice, side draft paint booth or something but yeah i barely had enough paint i got an eight ounce bottle and i really had to stretch the paint so for example on this part there's kind of some spots where i had to go real light where i know it won't be seen but it's still covered up so it shouldn't rust you know i mainly just went around the the sides and front where that will be visible so overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I think this is a pretty good stopping point. In the next part, we're gonna be doing the final assembly. I've got some more wiring to do, or I've got the wiring to do. And uh, hopefully we can get a test roast in. We'll just have to see how it goes. But uh, I'd just like to say thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and also subscribe that'll really help the channel grow and uh, we will see you on the next one